Hello guys, in the previous video, you have learned how to calculate WACC or Weighted Average Cost of Capital. In this video, we're gonna talk how to calculate cost of each component capital, cost of debt, cost of equity, and also cost of preferred stock. First, let's talk about cost of debt. As we know that WACC formula is WD times RD times 1 minus tax plus WPRP plus WS times RS. Cost of debt is the RD, or I can say this is cost of debt before tax. How can we get the debt? There are two ways. First is coming from the loan, it could be bank loan. Second is using bond. When we have loan, the RD or cost of debt will be the interest rate. While we issue bond, the RD will be yield to maturity or YTM. Yield to maturity basically total return that will be received by the bond holder. So one more time, if it is loan, the RD is the interest. If it is bond, the RD is yield to maturity. As we know that cost of debt has to be multiplied by 1 minus tax because interest is tax deductible. That's why cost of debt after tax equals to RD times 1 minus tax. Let's go to the question. The Hearser company currently outstanding bond have a 8% coupon and a 10% yield to maturity. Hearser believes it could issue new bonds at par that will provide a similar yield to maturity. If its marginal tax rate is 35%, what is Hearser's after tax cost of debt? As we know, because it is debt, so the RD is yield to maturity. It equals to 10%. What is S here is after tax cost of debt. It means RD times 1 minus tax equals to 10% times 1 minus 35%. It equals to 10% times 0 0.65. It equals to 6.5%. For cost of debt, is it clear, right? If it is clear, let's go to cost of preferred stock. What is preferred stock? So preferred stock basically is the stock that has characteristic almost the same with the debt. The common stock gives the very dividend, right? It can give dividend based on its net income. And how many percent of the net income that will be shared as dividend is not fixed every year. Well, for the preferred stock, the investor will receive fixed dividend. That's why the risk of preferred stock will be lower than the risk of the common stock. Because of that, later on, cost of preferred stock will be lower than cost of equity or cost of common stock because the risk is lower. Well, for the debt, the risk is lower than the preferred stock. If I sort in order, the cost of debt will be the lowest one, then the cost of preferred stock, then cost of the common stock will be the highest because it is the riskiest. And of course, when the risk is lower, the return will be also lower. Because in investment, we learn high risk, high return, low risk, low return. Moreover, for the preferred stock investor, they are more prioritized than the common stock investor. So for example, the company will be bankrupt and then they sell all their assets. The money first will be given to the creditor. The rest will be given to the preferred stock investor first. If there is any less, then it will be given to the common stock investor. But for the preferred stock investor, they don't have voting right in the shareholder annual meeting. While for the common stock investor, they have voting right in the shareholder annual meeting. Okay, let's talk about cost of preferred stock. As we know that the dividend paid to the preferred stock investor is fixed every period. That's why it has same characteristic with perpetuity. What is perpetuity? You can see in this video. So the cost of preferred stock or RP equals to DP. It is dividend of the preferred stock divided by PP. PP is the price of the preferred stock. 
One more time, the RP equals to DP divided by PP. In previous talk, we don't need to multiply with 1 minus tax because it is not tax deductible. Sample question. Stanford Industry can issue perpetual preferred stock at a price of $50 a share. The stock will pay a constant annual dividend of $5 a share. What is the company cost of preferred stock? As we know, the formula RP equals to DP divided by PP. It equals $5 divided by $50. So the RP is 10%. Have you got the idea? Now let's talk about cost of equity or cost of common stock or cost of detailed earning. There are two approaches to calculate cost of equity. First is dividend growth model and the second is capital asset pricing model. First dividend growth model or DGM. Basically the concept of dividend growth model or DGM is the same with discounted cash flow concept or DCF that you have learned in the previous video. So cost of equity using dividend growth model will be like this. RS equals to D1 divided by PO plus G. Okay, D1, this is D1 divided by PO plus G. D1 is forecasted dividend. D1 is forecasted dividend or the dividend that will be paid. It could be searched by this formula. D1 equals to D0 times 1 plus G. G itself is the growth. D0 is last dividend paid. And then PO is the price of the stock. And the G as I mentioned before is the growth. If the growth is unknown, you can search it by using RR, it is retention rate, times ROE, return on equity. This is information for you guys. When the company want to issue the stock, they have to pay several administrative costs. We call this as flotation costs. How if the company issue new stock and then they have to pay flotation costs? So the formula of the dividend growth model will be like this. RS equals to D1 divided by PO times 1 minus flotation cost in percent plus G. So RS equals to D1 divided by PO. It is the same with the previous formula. But times 1 minus F. F here is the flotation cost in percent and then plus with G or growth. This is the sample question. The future earning, dividend, and common stock price of Carpeto Technology Incorporation are expected to grow 5% per year. Carpeto's common stock currently sells for $20 per share and its last dividend was $2. Using DCF approach, it is the same with dividend growth model. What is its cost of common equity? It is known in the question that the G is 5%, the price is $20, the DO or D0 is $2. This is DO or D0 because it is last dividend. That's why we have to find first the D1. D1 equals to D0 times 1 plus G. It equals to $2 times 1 plus 5%. Remember the growth has to be in percent. It equals to $2.1. So let's find the RS or cost of common equity. It equals to D1 divided by PO plus G. So the RS equals to 2.1 divided by 20 plus 5%. It equals to 15.5%. So the cost of equity will be 15.5%. The second approach is capital asset pricing model. The capital asset pricing model is calculated using this formula. RS equals to RF plus beta times RM minus RF. One more time, RS equals to RF plus beta times RM minus RF. RF is risk free rate. 
it is rate of risk free assets. In Indonesia, for example, RF is the bank Indonesia rate. RM is market return. Beta is sensitivity of stock return toward market return. You can see here, RM minus RF, we also call this as market risk premium. While beta times RM minus RF, we call this as risk premium. Let's go to the sample question directly. If the firm's beta is 1.6, the risk-free rate is 9% and the average return on the market is 13%, what will be the firm cost of common equity using the CAPM approach? The beta is 1.6, the RF is 9% and the RM is 13%. So RS equals to RF plus beta times RM minus RF. It equals to 9% plus 1.6 times 13% minus 9%. So the RS equals to 15.4%. Is it easy, right? Wow, you have learned about the cost of debt, cost of preferred stock, and also cost of equity. Now, let's calculate again WACC using the RD, RS, and also RP that we have to search by ourselves. This is a simple question. Patton Paints Corporation has a target capital structure of 40% of debt and 60% of common equity with no preferred stock. So this company only have debt and also common equity. Its before tax cost of debt is 12% and its marginal tax rate is 40%. The current stock price is P0 is 21.4 dollars. The last dividend with D0 is $2 and it is expected to grow at a 7% constant rate. Calculate its WACC. Now, as we know the formula of WACC is WG times RT times 1 minus tech plus WP RP plus WS RS. Because there is no preferred stock, so we can modify the formula it becomes WDRT times 1 minus tax plus WSRS. How if later on we have two debts? So we can modify also the formula like this. WD1 times RT1 times 1 minus tax plus WD2 times RT2 times 1 minus tax plus WPRP plus WSRS. So this formula is based on the capital that we own. To make us not confused, it's better for us to separate between the debt one and also equity one. All data regarding debt we put in the debt, all data regarding equity we put in the equity. For the debt, the width of debt it is known 40% and width of equity it is 60%. The cost of debt before tax it is 12% so the RT is 12% and then the tax is 40%. It is in the debt side. Well, for the equity, the current stock price, it is P0 equals to $21.4. The last dividend, it is D0, $2, and also the growth is 7%. We have known WD, RT, tax, and WS. What is unknown is RS, or cost of common equity or common stock. That's why we have to calculate first. So RS equals to D1 divided by P0 plus G. D1, as we know, that the formula is D0 times 1 plus G divided by P0 plus G. It equals to the D0 $2 times 1 plus G 7% divided by P0 21.4 plus the growth 7%. So the RS or cost of equity, it equals to 17%. Now calculate the WACC. WACC equals to WDRT times 1 minus tax plus WSRS because no preferred stock. So 40% WD times 12% RT times 1 minus 40% the tax plus 60% weight of the common equity times 17% cost of equity. It equals to 13.08%.
Congratulations guys, you have learned about how to calculate WACC completely. Hopefully this material is beneficial for you later on when you create your own business.